A warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 6th of August. Let's start off with a graphic. BA5 is the main variant at the moment uh, in the United States and the United Kingdom and around the world. Really quite impressive the way that BA5 has just taken over in the last few weeks, uh, last few months really. I mean, we had anticipated this. The other BAs are going down and the BA5 is going up. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this particularly today was... There's nothing obvious replacing it because the numbers of infections in the United Kingdom are going down quite rapidly. The size that they're starting to go down in the United States as well, certainly in other countries, they're going down. And if nothing replaces the BA5, I think we can look forward to remarkably low levels of coronavirus, hopefully uh, with a good prognosis for next winter. So um, that is really quite encouraging that BA5 is taking over, but nothing um, in terms of percentages, but is, is going down now in terms of numbers, but nothing obvious that's replacing it at the moment. And the situation is the same throughout the, uh, the mainland the United States, uh, as we see there. And if we show graphics for the UK and other countries, they will be very comparable. Now, um, these are the actual figures for the United States here, 85.5%. Right? The United States are currently updating these every week. Now, the reason I can't show you any updates from the UK is we're only updating monthly at the moment. So the United States data is actually more up to date than the UK data, which actually makes a quite pleasant change. BA4, an offshoot of that BA4.61. This is being monitored separately. I, I, I don't think it's going to outcompete BA5, though. There's no indication of that at the moment. And then various other BAs down to BA1, which is essentially zero at the moment. BA 2.75 is the only one I'm not sure about. Um, that is, um, it's uh, it's not listed in the US. And in the United Kingdom, there was about, I think, about 26 cases as of last month. I don't think we'll see a huge increase when we get the data uh, later this month for the United Kingdom. So fairly hopeful data really nothing to replace the BA5 at the moment hospitalizations in the states actually down 3.8 percent on the week that's the graphic for the hospitalizations in the states this downward trend here is genuine so we would hope that that would carry on going down now it's not gone away it's not it's not negligible but it's going down COVID patients in hospitals and ICU in the United States um, some increase in intensive care patients here, um, but as we say, early indications that the overall hospitalisation rate is just starting to go down. So in the United States, because the testing is so poor and poorly reported, we have to go on the hospitalisation rate. And of course, the other remarkably useful parameter we can go on is the test positivity. Not the number of tests done, but the number of tests coming back positive. And here we have that for the United States here. Um, so test positivity is actually just starting to uh, to go down and I believe it's it will carry on going down because the data from the United Kingdom is unambiguous and the United States has been a couple of weeks behind pretty well all the way through this BA4, BA5 bounce so I don't see why that should change now so confident things will go down in the States that's the summary from the New York Times uh, known daily case counts, uh, test positivity, hospitalizations, a slow downward trend. Now, the deaths in the United States actually aren't that low. The 393 per day uh, rolling over average over the last seven days. Um, and well, the deaths are going down slightly, but th th this this trend here is been flattish really for a period of time but uh, if I'm right about the positivity indicating that the uh, the number of positive cases the actual number of infections are going down that will start to go down I think we can be fairly confident about that now let's just look at some international uh, comparison data at the moment uh, this is as of today and the, the big increase of course here is uh, is Japan a dramatic increase in cases. Now, Japan, which really almost mysteriously avoided a lot of the earlier waves, is being hit by the Omicron BA5 particularly. Why that should have spread out throughout Japan as dramatically as it has compared to other variants isn't really that clear at the, at the moment. At least uh, we might get something more on that soon, but, but not yet. Australia going down, New Zealand going down, Germany going down. 
Gibraltar actually up a bit, United States. Um, Gibraltar, the reason I put Gibraltar in there was um, it, it's, it's about the only area, country, province, whatever you want to call it, that's actually um, fairly high at the moment. But even that's not that high. So um, it's actually put that there because it's fairly good news. Um, the greatest increase of most countries, but it's not that great an increase. Netherlands, United Kingdom, Canada, fairly low uh, levels. Of course, that relates to official testing. So hospitalizations are a much better indicator. And Japan, unfortunately, we do see more hospitalizations. United Kingdom's going down. Australia hospitalizations going down. Canada going up slightly. United States is actually going down. This is slightly out of date now, slightly going down. And Netherlands fairly flat for hospitalizations. When we look at deaths... Um, New Zealand, yeah, there's been there's been a we we have looked at some of the reasons for the increasing death rate in New uh, some of the reasons for the increasing death rate in New Zealand, um, partly due partly due to organisational uh, attitudinal factors. Um, Australia death rates going down, um, United Kingdom down a bit, Germany actually still going up a bit. United States, Japan, relatively low death rate despite high hospitalizations, Canada and Netherlands, very low at the moment. But of course, always good to look at the overall cumulative numbers and the United States is still got the highest death rate followed by the UK, Germany, Netherlands, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan in that order for total number of uh, total number of people that have died, the United States and the United Kingdom. Um really um quite a bit worse than other other equally developed countries now dr fauci has been speaking in the national press uh about ba5 um if they don't get vaccinated or they don't get boosted they're going to get into trouble according to dr fauci um, he wants to increase vaccinations and booster rates so the virus does not have, as he says, ap ample opportunity to freely circulate. Um, to tell you the truth, to me, this is starting to sound a bit uh, incredulous, really. High vaccination rates in the UK, massive amounts of BA5. It's almost as if he's talking about things that would have been true in the first wave and the Delta wave. Um, strange. Um, he said it's uh, it's about you as an individual but it's also about the communal response to get this outbreak under control is Dr Fauci saying that we can control this with vaccination um, really I don't think he's doing his credibility any good uh, at all by making statements like that um, let's just give one example um, President of the United States, fully vaccinated, doubly boosted. And of course, we know we tested positive twice in the last couple of weeks, although one was a rebound test. Um, it really is surprising me. Now, now I, I, I noted there that Dr. Fauci is 81. Um, at 81, most people in the UK would have retired. Um, he's still quite with it on the ball, but but um, just his thinking just seems to be, to me, um, out of date so um, this is not really doing his credibility too much good I don't think we're going to control this um, pandemic with uh, vaccination uh, now United States um, just before we go to look at other places uh, again um, this is quite interesting so here we have the uh, the, the, the top line is the number of infections uh, then, then the number of hospitalizations, then the number of deaths. Now, the thing about this is we know that the um, we know that this is accurate, the hospitalizations that that's an accurate number, and we also know that the uh, the number of deaths is an accurate number. So they're accurate numbers, um, but we know that the number of people reporting positive tests is a massive uh, underreporting. So in actual fact, this is this is. I mean, I'm making up a line here, but it's way, way higher. It's way, way higher than it actually is. So what we actually see is great increases in the rate of people actually being infected, if that's real infections. This is where the UK data is much better. So that line there, we can cross that out because that's only the number of people testing positive. That's nearer the real infection line there. 
and yet we're only seeing very minimal increases in hospitalisation now going down and, and deaths are actually starting to trend down now as well. And um, so we've got this greatly increased number of BA5 particularly. Um, and the reason that these are down, I believe, is because it's a natural immunity effect, which um, you'd expect someone trained in medicine to have a good understanding of uh, natural immunity. But uh, still seems to be this over-reliance on this idea that vaccination is going to get rid of the problem. And of course, um, the vaccinations that we're using now are still for the original Wuhan strain from 2019. We won't have an Omicron-specific vaccine until fall or autumn time. And, and even then, I think from memory, that's based on BA2, which is now, pff, it's now obsolete. Um, the idea that it, we can vaccinate out of this, to me, with the change in the variants and everything, just seems completely unrealistic. So a um, bit surprised about Dr. Fauci still um, going about the same uh, information there. Now, um, United Kingdom Health Authority here, United Kingdom Health Security Agency. Um, COVID-19 activity decreasing, it confirms on its latest uh, website here. Highest number of respiratory incidents, which is mostly SARS coronavirus, to in care homes. And of course, people in care homes are often indoors all the time. And as we've talked about various times, and it's a variable that still hasn't been addressed. Basically, I don't think there's much more I can do about it now. That These are the people that are most likely to be short of vitamin D because they're not getting out as much. Still hasn't been addressed. It's a variable why not address it? Government really hasn't addressed that in any meaningful way. They did get very small doses, but not enough to make a difference. Now, um, other things. Influenza, of course, is low, very, very low, because it's summertime, as you would expect. Um, now, respiratory syncytial virus up to 6.5% of uh, positivity overall, 6.5% of tests coming back positive. Under fives, it's 22%. So we are still seeing this uh, catch-up effect, as we noted with the adenovirus uh, last week and these terrible cases of hepatitis in children. So other viruses are still circulating more than we would expect, presumably because of the immunity that was not generated during the restrictions and various uh, lockdowns. Rhinovirus positivity is actually down, that's the common cold, down to about 8.4%. So uh, as, as Tim Spector pointed out last week, if you've got a sore throat at the moment in the UK, it's more than likely caused by COVID, which the incident, the incidence is still high, but going down. So new cases, 145,000 per day on the COVID symptom tracker data, uh, 2.8 million people positive. But that's the graph. Uh, this is the graph here. So this is um, June, uh, July. Very rapid decrease uh, this will carry on. And the reason that this is going down is because of, uh, I believe, I'm going to be giving evidence for why I'm saying this, this is people becoming immune. Natural immunity to the virus. More, more people are getting it and developing immunity. That's why I'm optimistic at the moment, because the cases are going down and there doesn't seem... The reason we've had these repeated waves is we had, we had the Wuhan wave, we had the, the, the Alpha wave, we had the Delta wave, we had the Omicron wave, the BA1, the BA2, the BA4, the BA5. Um, these waves have been caused by, primarily, um, by new variants. And at the moment, we don't have a variant to replace the BA5. So if we get rid of the BA5, that's brilliant, unless a new variant comes along. And at the moment, if it has come along, unless it's BA2.75, which I don't think it's going to be, um, is why I'm optimistic at, at, at the moment. There doesn't seem to be a, a replacement for the BA5, which means that cases will go down as we, seek, as we move to seek to live with um, COVID and enjoying the immunity that we get. Office of National Statistics, England uh, down to 1 in 25 people infected, but it's still 3.86% of, of the population. This is still a relatively high prevalence. Wales, Wales 1 in 30, Northern Ireland 1 in 17, Scotland 1 in 20. And as an example, I've put the English graphic up there. And because of the uh, COVID symptom tracker data, which is always a week to 10 days ahead, we can safely say that because this is going down, uh, this will be down 
as we've correctly anticipated now for some time, this will be down um, in next week's data. That's as good as we're going to get to a guarantee. It will carry on going down. Now, long COVID, um, we did talk about this um, from the King's College London um, study um, a couple of days ago now. And we did notice that some people with long COVID have got permanent damage to the brain and the heart and the lungs, which probably won't recover, sadly. But the number of those, I believe, is going to be small. So let's look at the number of, of, of uh, long COVID as of the 2nd of July. 1.8 million. That's 2.8% of the population. Very high. Of that 2.8%, of that 1.8 million... 81% experiencing long COVID for at least 12 weeks, 43% for at least one year. Um, so this is way, way higher than those that seem to have these more serious uh, COVID features. So I'm, I'm reasonably confident that these numbers will start to go down. And in fact, we start to see that already here because this is the graphic on long COVID from the ONS. And we are starting to see this downward trend. And I believe this will continue, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to go down to zero because some people, sadly, I believe, are going to have permanent disability after uh, COVID infection. But of course, it's hard to say it's after COVID infection because a lot of those people have been vaccinated. So really differentiating between um, vaccination issues and COVID infection issues is going to be really quite complicated and I haven't seen any firm data that's a differentiating between those two as of yet antibody levels um, this is useful very useful because um at the moment um the office of national statistics is looking at the above the 1. 179 nanograms per mil threshold and the uh, 800 nanograms per mil threshold there so um people with above the threshold level at 179 nanograms 97.8% uh, of the population above that level. Now, we know the number that have been exposed is higher than this, but that's the number that have still got above that level. Um, the reason this number has gone down is because antibodies wane after vaccination or after natural infection. And remember, the Office of National Statistics do not differentiate between these two, which is uh, inexcusable or at least unfortunate. Um, and the... Uh, Above the 800 nanogram per mil threshold, um, 80, 82.2%. Now, this indicates that these infections, because the antibody levels are still so high, are recent. And the reason I've picked this age group is this age group has a relatively lower number of uh, vaccinations. Therefore, I think we can surmise that a lot of this higher level of the very high levels of antibodies the 82.2% of the above 800 nanograms per mil levels of antibodies is due to um, recent natural uh, infection. So um, the, the immune system protects us against thousands of different viruses, thousands of different bacteria, fungi, all sorts of things. I don't see any reason why this virus should be an exception as we learn to live with it. But as I've said, hopefully at a lower level than we had feared for next winter. So as of now, unless we get a variant to replace BA5 that's more contagious or more pathogenic or with greater levels of immune escape, I actually feel a bit more optimistic about COVID in next winter. Of course, the other thing, oh, and also by next winter, the respiratory syncytial virus, hopefully the immunity should have caught up. The adenovirus, hopefully the immunity should have caught up. And of course, that leaves the huge big unknown uh, for next winter in terms of infectious disease anyway, uh, influenza, which um, we don't know yet. Unfortunately, we will see more people with uh, cancers and other conditions for various reasons that we've looked at on these videos. But COVID wise, um, fairly optimistic at the moment. And thank you for watching.